Hello and welcome to Central Ohio Heaters. Thanks for your interest today in our tutorial video for the 315,000 BTU waste oil furnace. There's other models that are slightly different, but this will give you the basic idea of the Shenandoah waste oil burner system. We're going to talk today about five different categories. The first category being the components. We'll talk about the location, description, and purpose. The second category, we'll talk about the sequence of operation. The third category, we'll show you an operational video. The fourth category will be about practical installation guidelines. The fifth category will be about cleaning and periodic maintenance. Okay, here, let's go. <clears throat> the first category, we'll talk about the components. Here's the heater junction power strip where the power comes to the unit here from the circuit breaker and goes to the different places on the unit comes out here to the orange tail goes out to run your pump when you get your furnace it'll have an orange tail to run the pump and a purple tail will be the power coming to the unit be sure you use a heavy enough wire coming to the unit the second component will be the fan limit control this is to turn the burner off in the event of an overheat and it turns the fan on and off as the heat as the unit warms up and cools down of course the fan motor is right inside of the uh, squirrel cage here this is this one here is a direct drive squirrel cage fan motor the power comes down to the burner junction power strip here has a prime switch here down is prime neutral is center is off up is run and then you have an air proof switch here this here turns the burner on once you get air pressure it turns it off in the event of an air compressor failure there's an air tank behind here an air solenoid here this lets air into the burner to atomize the oil through the nozzle on top here this is the flame controller. The technical name would be the intermittent ignition oil primary. That is hooked up to the double yellow cord here which goes over to the electric eye. This double yellow cord goes back and forth. This electric eye here watches the flame up in here all the time to make sure the flame is burning. If it doesn't see a flame it does not send ohms back here to the flame controller and then the button pops up and shuts the unit down. This here is the transformer, 10,000 volt power lugs here in the transformer. Sets on the electrodes there and goes up to the nozzle. Uh, this CAD cell is also called electric eye, a photo cell, a photo eye. There are a couple different names, that's what it is. Here's your uh, air pressure regulator. This adjusts the air pressure going to the nozzle. Up in here is your quick disconnect, female and male, to hook up the slide out here to run the slide out. You have your, uh, we'll show you here in a minute what the, all the slide outs. This is your terminal strip, your lower heater, thermostat 140 degree, upper heater thermostat 160 degree, your lower heater is hooked to the the one that goes back in the block, the upper heater is hooked to the big one with the 7 16 hex on here. The lower heater runs on the idle circuit, the blue one. The upper heater runs on the run circuit, the orange one. That also runs the oil solenoid. And of course, that, when that comes on, then you have an indicator light here, the green one. That's the, uh, the burner on the run circuit. Come over here to the cart. We have the electrodes here on the electrode holder. That goes inside of the blast tube here, goes up to the front of the flame. And then, of course, in front of that sets this retention head that gives a good vortex to the flame. The components on the slide out here. Terminal strip, the white one is the neutral. The blue one is the idle circuit, keeps the Oil preheater warm all winter long, waiting for a flame command from the orange one. That's the run circuit. Runs the 160 degree 
upper thermostat which goes to the big heater with the 716 hex in the back here goes in there you have these two switches one's green for the 160 the other one's 140 the 140 the lower one on the idle circuit this is the the heater that slides in the block right there goes way back in there all you see is wires uh, if you have a J pump the round pump about four inches round with eight bolts on the end that's a pressure pump the old style pump brings us pressure in here and that style system uses a pressure regulator the pressure regulator controls the pressure here to run the oil through the nozzle and that's how you set your flame size if you have a J pump if you have a meter pump you will have to take the pressure regulator off and put a four-way T on it like this and they don't even use a pressure regulator with a new style meter pump there's more instructions on that on the uh, bottom of our parts page on the meter pump video on the front of the preheater block here is the nozzle adapter a big o-ring a small o-ring to keep them separate and then your nozzle screws in the front of there that sits right up here that atomizes the oil for the flame this here is what they call a kombu solenoid this is used on both the air and the oil on a Shenandoah brass uh, adapter in the bottom it is directional make sure that, you're, that it goes through the right direction this is the new style plunger has a spring in the center this one works very well doesn't get stuck o-ring in the bottom of there to keep it from leaking electromagnet goes on top it's right there that's the same as the air solenoid in the uh, burner over here also if you have the old style J pump you will have a, a cleanable filter a check valve and screen down the tank if you have the new style meter pump here this one here has a 150 rpm motor instead of uh, this in here this specific RPM is for a specific furnace this would be like for the smaller Shenandoah furnaces or something like that each different furnace has its own different RPM so it is RPM specific and they're not interchangeable between furnaces this 315 is going to take a 325 RPM drive motor the 7710 SunTech pump it's a square pump it has a suction filter with a suction gauge to make sure it's not plugged up pull, not pulling a hard vacuum has a check valve here so it doesn't back bleed if you let it set a couple weeks pressure gauge this is an emergency pressure relief if it goes over 50 pounds like it gets a piece of rubber or carbon or brass or something in the nozzle that can't push through then it goes back to the tank from here it goes all the way straight up to the furnace uphill all the way tapered do not go up against the ceiling and back down to the furnace you can see a video a complete video of the <clears throat> uh, meter pump on the bottom of our parts page on centralohioheaters.com the second category we want to look at is the sequence of operation first of all the power comes in here <clears throat> comes to the terminal strip goes to the fan limit control if it's not overheated then the burner gets power down here goes all the way down through there terminal strip quick disconnect comes down here to the blue wire to the lower switch it needs to be on 15 minutes that warms up the entire heater block it will not fire until this heater block gets warmed up and typically a red light here is going to go out that goes on and off all day but when it first goes out then it's up to temperature whenever the lower thermostat is commanding heat in the block this red lights gonna be on once that's on and warmed up then you're ready to go compressed air hooks up to here or uh, oil hooks up to here <clears throat> from your oil pump turn your switch to run turn your wall thermostat on and that's going to energize the uh, air solenoid which brings air into the tank which closes the air proof switch which starts the transformer the electric motor and a lot of them new motors have a centrifugal switch in when the motor starts it closes the centrifugal switch 
which sends power down here to the run circuit, it all comes on at once. The orange from the flame controller also sends power out to run the pump. So all this does is turns the pump on and the air solenoid on. When the air solenoid lets air into the tank, that closes the switch and the switch is, the low air switch in here is actually what starts the burner. Once the flame starts, then you get ohms coming back to the eye, which comes over here to the F and F terminal, which keeps the red button from popping and it'll run all day long. Uh, after the flame has been running about three to five minutes, the fan limit control up here gets warmed up and that turns the fan on and it'll run all day long until the thermostat's satisfied, then the flame goes out. There's going to be heat in the cabinet. It'll probably run three to five minutes, blow the, the cabinet cool down, blow the heat out of the cabinet, and then the fan will shut off and it'll wait for the next thermostat to come in. Now, the third category I want to show you here is the operational video. We'll turn it on here in just a moment. Okay, the flame's established here. Open this up here, you can see it burn. If you'll notice, the bright white yellow flame does not have a black tail on the end. It's nice, clean, soft, gentle bright white yellow just a soft gentle rolling flame be sure you do your adjustments after the thing's been running for maybe 15 minutes pay attention put at first when you first open your peep door sometimes you give it extra air false air in there and that uh, takes the black tail away your combustion air here is what blows air at the fire this here is the the coarse air band, that adjusts the air. This adjusts the, it's a coarse air band adjustment. That's got the little chisel line here. We typically put a green line here, shows you about where to adjust the coarse air band. Then the fine air band here has got the long finger on it. That rotates and adjusts the air. Both of them together set the air, fine and coarse. It's just simply a combustion air adjustment. And then this here, air pressure, this runs air through the nozzle. And that's adjustable also. Typically somewhere around 12 to 15 pounds, depends on the size of the furnace. Uh, too much air, too much air going through the The nozzle will, will make the flame flicker and flutter and blink. And if you give way too much, the flame gets brown. Same with the combustion air. Here, I'll start this up again, let you see it run. Okay, look up here at the stack. This is burning right now and zero smoke. Very nice and clean. Refer to our technical help page, there's, there's a detailed explanation on the flame adjustment on the technical help page on our website, centerohioheaters.com. If you get the thing adjusted right, the chamber inside should burn white to tan. Should give you a nice clean uh, flame, never black smoke inside the chamber. The fourth category is practical installation guidelines. We'll show you that. We'll show you the cleaning here in a minute. Practical installation guidelines. You want three foot in all directions around the furnace for fire protection. Uh, it needs to be eight foot up off of the floor. Be sure you use heavy enough power cord coming in. These direct drive squirrel cage fans typically use a little more current. You need to have at least 12 gauge wire coming in, possibly 10 gauge, especially if you're running long distance, especially with the bigger furnaces, so your wire doesn't get hot. Be sure you mount the furnace out of the center of the shop. 
Do not mount the furnace up in the center of the shop. People have backed semi trucks through the shops already and knocked the furnace off the ceiling. Mount it along the edge where a semi can't back into it. When you go up through the, the chimney, when you take the chimney up through the attic, be sure you cut the insulation back at least four inches and you should use a uh, attic insulation guard. Fasten on a shelf or maybe to the ceiling or a stand so that you don't uh, have a problem with your chimney going up through the attic. As always, see your book for all the specific things and be sure to get it inspected by a professional licensed contractor to make sure you, that you don't violate local, national, UL listing, fire, electrical codes. A word on the meter pump here. Be sure you have a leak proof suction line and be sure your pressure line goes uphill all the way from the pump to the furnace. Don't go up against the ceiling and back down because it won't bleed the air out right. Uh, we have a good video on our website on the parts page, centralohioheaters.com, all the specifics on the meter pump. The next category, the fifth category, being cleaning and periodic maintenance. About every 500 hours you need to open up the furnace. Some of the furnaces have different style uh, clean outs. This one here has a door that opens up on the end of the furnace. You go in there, we can get you a clean out tool. We sell them. It scrapes the walls of the chamber, cleans out the chamber, and then you pull everything down to this end and you vacuum it out. There's a clean out on the side over here. You, and that's reversible. You can put the clean out or the chimney on either side. Clean out on one side, chimney on the other side so that you can clean it out. Weekly, you need to check the flame size and the flame appearance in here. Check the suction gauge on the meter pump, the pressure gauge in the meter pump. Make sure it's running the proper pressures. Make sure the suction filter is not plugged up every month. Clean out the water in your tank every year. Get your burner professionally checked uh, check the electrodes, the retention head, especially the nozzle, those kind of things. Be sure you turn your power off in the winter. At the end of the season, either pull this slide out out here, the male and the female, disconnect that or simply turn the circuit breaker off so that you're not heating the oil in this preheater block all summer. That will carbonize inside that preheater block and then you'll be ready to go for next year. If you're interested in a 315,000 BTU waste oil furnace, give us a call. CentralOhioHeaters.com is our website. There's lots of information on the parts page and the Shenandoah page, all kinds of brands and sizes. You can click on pictures for great detail. Uh, heaters, components, we sell exchange burners, we sell meter pumps, we have a free eight page technical help for our customers. 50 point safety and functional inspection to make sure your furnace is safe. Come on over to centralohioheaters.com. Take a look around, see what we can help you with. Shenandoah sells a number of sizes. They, they range 125,000, 175, 235, 350, a 500 narrow, and a 500,000 wide Shenandoah waste oil furnace. Them are the square ones. The Horizons, they range, the long, long skinny units, they range 155,000, 200,000, 240, and 315. Thanks for your interest today in our tutorial video for the 315,000 BTU Shindo Horizon Waste Oil Furnace. Give us a call. We can help you. Get you a nice warm shop. Thanks for watching.